Welcome to Real Tur- Talk. Well, the, 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 Did you just mess that uh, up? Welcome to we- Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we <laughs> drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. Uh, I'm your stuttering, stuttering Stanley, Chris Fuller. <laughs> and I'm Mark. And we're just going to keep on rolling keep with trucking, it because baby. why not? Why uh, the so heck not, man? This week is a continuation of last week where we're going to be talking about what is the Trinity and why do we believe it? Mark, are you ready? Because I'm not. I'm ready, baby. Let's, right, let's go. Let's go. Well, at least I recovered. You well. were just the punter <laughs> that kicked the ball into the yeah, other dude's butt right I, there. At least I still recovered. Did you see that happen again to another football team where the punter punted no. it and it hit the blocker's hand no. like his own team? Wow. Come on, guys. Professionals and college people, we should know how to punt a football right now. Speaking of Maybe. football, have you been keeping up with all the weather? What's been happening in the NFL? No. So, because of all the snow that's been going down. Because it's January. Well, oh. I mean, technically recording, it's still oh, November. Here we go. We're yeah, still here in November go. 19th. There you go, Sabrina. You, We're getting started. Time are recording. So, time recording, November 19th. The Bills just announced that the next two weeks, they had a, like, they were supposed to be home games in Buffalo. Canceled. There was so much snow, they canceled it. So, they're playing both games at Ford Field Ooh. against the Lions and against, I don't, no, 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 against the Browns and maybe against the Lions. I don't know. But, needless to say, because of the weather, and this is what's, I mean, kind of the ironic part, that, um, this is the third time that they've had to change, not they, but an NFL team has had to change venue in some way, shape, or form because of the weather. The first bunch one was of because of hurricanes, babies. hurricanes, and then the snow. Get a bunch of shovels, go out and shovel the field and play. So so there's there's my fun fact to start the episode. The Buffalo uh, Bills are not playing at home. Well, what even brought that up, dude? I don't know where you, you were talking about punting the ball because I screwed oh, up the intro. Oh, punting NFL, changing teams. We you should know really, what we're doing. Yeah, wow, no. my poor little brain, dude. I'm tired. So you just punted the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what just happened. So, well, we're back with part two, baby. We are. We're back for another fun-filled, long uh, word vomit. <laughs> well, that is a way to... So if you're Sorry. new to the show, I apologize. Oh, I mean... <laughs> So, I, yeah, I mean, after we were done recording the first episode, I, I even asked you, Mark, I was like, hey, are you, are you tracking with me? Because, you know, I'm tracking as long as My you're tracking fried from, yeah. from this week's I just want to make sure but... somebody's tracking because obviously I wasn't tracking very well. well. But here's the deal, though. I don't think people realize that when you're staring at an iPad, reading your notes, reading oh. all these verses and and and. and, and when your, you're your reading them lost. not verbally, like your notes were flawless until you have to read them like crap. I didn't paragraph yeah. this out very well. Right. Yeah, I should have broke this up a little so bit better. So people don't really see what our notes look like. Like that's why I bullet yeah. point the snot out of everything. Yeah, I like everything's a bullet point for me. Typically I give a little like I'll, I'll give a thought and then I'll do like a space. Yep. And I need to go back to that, breaking it, breaking it. I think it that's what like you're that. trying to give a good flow. I'm trying, but it's... It, but then it got all wonky with the font sizes and yeah, stuff. That so, we don't know what happened. So, so I did it on a, a computer on a Windows, and now I'm on an there's Apple. There's your problem. Now I'm on an no, Apple trying to read it, and it's like, wait a second, this this doesn't translate well. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, so while you're pulling up our fun questions from within our... From the our, Facebook group that Facebook I abused group, my admin privileges of tagging I, everybody in this I boat. I see that you are not drinking coffee, but... I'm not, because I've already had two cups. I'm still drinking the what we were drinking last week, the Frederick's... But, Butterscotch. What is that? What this? You're drinking that Frederick Butterscotch stuff again? Yeah, the Butterscotch. But what the heck coffee. is that in the can next to you? So this is something that Janelle. It's a new one. I haven't heard. It's a pure aqua, uh, Belvia bold pineapple and strawberry sparkling water. That's Aldi brand, isn't it? It probably that is. Aldi brand. It's good though. Is it? It's it's phenomenal. Huh. You might have to get one next episode. Zero caffeine, so you can do it. And sugar Say, free. I had a uh, Lacroix Pomple Mousse before oh, I came. Oh, the Pomple Mousse. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I had a Pomple Mousse. But, um, All right. But so, so in the Facebook group, I, I abused my aver- my admin priz and jacked yeah. everybody. Okay. So, yep. so we had a whole bunch of people who, who jumped in and asked us questions for the top of the right. episode. So, so let's, let's hit let's some jump out. Yep. So, and we've actually heard from people we haven't heard from in a while, like Deandra Hutchinson. We haven't heard from her in a while. She says, snowman, reindeer, or Christmas tree. That's it. Christmas Snowman, tree. reindeer, or Christmas tree? Christmas tree. Why, because Martin Luther? No, because it's just prettier to look at. You could do more with the Christmas tree than you can I with I love or, snowmen. I just hate making them. Well, you see, my kids made one outside. I, I like, did. It was I cute. It's a stubby little I one. I enjoy making them, but to me, like, you can only do so much with a snowman. But Dude, with a Christmas tree. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, like Christmas trees are like, like so Beth has her own Christmas tree at the house, and it's gotten so bad with the kids touching her ornaments. Not not really her, but more like they take them off, they break them, they yeah, rip sure, them, whatever. Sure. So it's got to the point where we, like, we had to make a threat of if we catch you playing in 
mama's Christmas tree, the Christmas tree that we put in your room is gone. Ooh. So we've had to make that threat lately. So I, I mean, I would, I, I love snowmen, but you can't beat a Christmas tree with lights, Christmas man. Tree, bro. You can't. Uh, here's another fun question that we had. Ooh, what's your favorite midnight snack from Garen? Is it ale wine? Halloween? I don't know. Garen Anyways. wants to know what's your favorite midnight snack. I got one. Popcorn. Kettle corn, baby. Yeah. Kettle corn, popcorn. Kettle, or or chips corn. and salsa, like we talked about last yeah. week. Yeah. Oh. A mean fresh, bowl of chips and salsa. Fresh salsa or yes. hacienda salsa. One of the two. At midnight? Yeah. Oh, like you oh, order yeah. it before and whatever. Yeah, like if you get like the big 32-ounce container to so, go. So, actually, the other day, Beth and I had an at-home date night. We, we were just, It was a long night with the kids. We went to... I, I, well, I can't remember what we were doing. I don't know. We were out doing... Oh, it was Tuesday. We went to we went to counseling. Then we came back. It was already late. So, we just door dashed out back because we're nice. like, we still got to have a date. So, we watched a movie and then I fell asleep in the movie but enjoyed me a good mean out back. So, that was our midnight. Sweet. Uh, here's another one. Uh, Caitlin Jean wants to know ankle or crew socks? Ankle. Your boys and ankle. I love ankles. I love ankle socks, but there's something nice about that black crew sock with them mm. shoes and them shorts. I got to wear it all the time. Beth makes fun of me. She said I look like a grown child when I wear those. Though. Well, because, I mean, Cause shoe, I am. the shoe fits. But right now, yeah, I wear ankle. I'm wearing ankle 100% right now. I'm wearing nothing right now. Do you now. have... I'm, I'm wearing I'm wearing no, slippers. You're wearing no socks. You're not wearing nothing. Well, That'd be inappropriate. Well, we're talking about socks. I know, so but some people wearing... might not have been listening. All of a sudden, they heard Fuller's wearing nut. Well, you know, if you were on the YouTube, you'd know. That's very uncomfortable to think about. <laughs> but are you are you a brand snob when it comes to your socks? You, no. How bougie is your socks? The only, the only, how bougie is your socks? The only bougie socks I have are the Dickies, uh, the Dickies high socks because of the quality I, control. Because I wear boots and they're thick. And so it, it, there's not as much like rubbing. Friction. I pretty much wear Friction. exclusively Adidas or Reebok socks. Yeah, no, I I can't afford that. I'm not bougie. Ooh, here's a good one. Um, ooh, I'm not ready. Right, last, one, last one, last one, <sighs> last one. You last get one more. One? One I got more. one more. We got we got a review to read yet. And we got to dive into another long episode. Okay, here we go. So this one is this is from ryan he says how has starting the podcast affected your guys's lives my wedge my wedge i, got, I found a wife to get one. i found a i found a i found a good one how has it affected my life i mean besides beth which beth you are you are the crown jewel of the hide crown but you know but other ways there's a lot of other ways i'd say it affected our lives my life in a good way okay i Let's would say it. the biggest one is it's grown our friendship like crazy yeah you know yeah. i think that's been the biggest benefit is week in a week out it forces me to think about think about not just religion but think about christian topics and sure read the bible about it's these solidified topics and our doctrines. Prep. It's, it's solidified a lot of things it's still a lot of conversations but for, in reality it's more just the fact of we i have something I, and let's be honest sometimes the friday night you know there's that friday night like oh friday's coming oh like i don't want to do it friday nights are long but when we're here dude like i, I don't know man I, I love hanging out with you oh, i get my yeah. friend time every single week i mean there's some weeks it's just like all right we got we have this. to do it we got to show and then we there's some weeks it's it. like oh we get the podcast now, that was me this week is like yeah. i get to pocket now the prep is hard leading into it yes always it, oh, every week though because we don't want to we don't want to come in like not researched up, not prepared, I guess. Right, because we're accountable for what we teach. But I, 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 I mean, some st- yeah. sometimes it's like we've had those weeks that it's like, okay, let's just have one of the wives ask us a random question or let's do it like, a, you know, ask Instagram or ask Facebook because it's like we just didn't have time. Not that we didn't want to, but we just didn't have time that week to prepare. So it's like, all right, we're just going to go off the top of our head. Let's go. And just go for it. So anyways, so all right. Uh, yeah, I would agree with you in those statements. But uh, we have another review, my good sir. Oh, we do. Okay, so no more questions. I was reading the other questions. Well, no, because we're we already. We have two questions that. about the chosen. We're our, we can answer our ask those next uh, next episode, but we're we're right at that mark where you know we, I like to try to transition into. You mean not the twenty five minute mark? Not twenty five. No. Okay, but we got a review to read. Another we do. One. We do. What do we got? I'll read this one because you, you're going to read a lot this episode. Thank I have you. a feeling. So Thank you. This is from Noah Hodges thirteen, and he said, "I'm, I'm just going to go for it." He 13. says, "Love it." Five stars. This right here is what you need. It's comedy. <laughs> it's faithful, and it's all around amazing. I am 18 years old, and I have trouble with finding something to listen to on my journey getting closer to God until I found this. Absolutely love it, and I watch all. He's a YouTuber. We're pointing well, at you. Well, not YouTuber, but you watch us on YouTube, my bro. What's up? So, and listen on here because it is so good. So, bro, you double dip. He, 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 dude, know what? Watch you need YouTube a swag bag, bro. So hit us up with that swag bag. He says, keep up the great work, and I can't thank you guys enough for helping me through so 
much. Noah, thank you. Bro, so Noah, reach out to us on Instagram, Facebook, or screw it, YouTube. Whatever you got to do to get a hold of us so we can get your address to get that. If, if you're in the USA. And get, get that, that mini, mini swag, swag bag, bag in the mail. Well, Janiel will get that mini swag bag yeah, in the mail. Right. You know, it's really funny that uh, apparently um, Janiel is known as the podcast lady at FedEx because how many mini swag bags they, they send they out. Know, they know who you and I are. Because our faces of the bag. Because our faces on the bag without ever meeting us. <laughs> oh, look, it's the, it's the, it's the RTC Janiel's lady But Janiel's known again. as the RTC lady who yeah. sends out all these yeah. care packages through FedEx, which is awesome. And speaking of her being the RTC speaking lady of, okay. and the swag bags, we also still offer, if you are in need of a Bible, we still have, we have quite a few. many CSB Bibles left to give out if you are in need of a bible or you just have a hard translation you're looking for a translation to better um, grow your relationship with god and easier to read a more readable oh there's yeah, the, the more word. readable the more readable we have a lot of really good ones we got the apologetic study bible we got the restoration we got the seven arrows i love the fisher's bible i'm, I'm tempted we to got, st- i'm tempted to steal a bible from our own list because that bible is so cool though you can't steal a bible well, it's such a cool one. We've only got one left of those. Well, you better jump on it, peoples. You can't. You can't. Steal but it. if you want to, you know, maybe sponsor us sending out one of those Bibles to somebody, reach out to us too. We're working on ways for you guys. Did Elon Musk just t- tweet you? He did. He just tweeted me saying, "Reinstate former President Trump." <laughs> so apparently, Trump's back on Twitter. I have no idea. Babylon B's back Anyways. on Twitter. But Anyways. either way, if you want to sponsor us sending out a Bible to somebody, hit us up. We will tell you the ways to do that. Or maybe by this point, there's already is a ways on the website. Yeah, who knows? We we we're. Yeah, who knows? Oh, oh, remind me after this episode's done to talk to you because I have a solution. You know what we didn't do? What we should probably do is what? the Stephen Curtis Chapman thing. <gasps> I could do that? I'll, I'll okay, let you do it so, before we so, dive into the truth. Before if, we go diving in, we're going deep. So we do that joke all the time. And if you're not an old school CCM fan, you have no idea what we're talking about. But Stephen Curtis Chapman is Fuller's favorite artist of all time. Well, no, it's more Janiel's, but it's a very My good bad. artist. So, yeah. Janiel, this is for you, girl. This so, is for you. So, I was scrolling through Instagram the other day, so, and all of a sudden, this reel pops on, and I was losing my mind. And I put I put out Instagram stories. I tagged you in it, and thankfully, you haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it so yet. So, you're gonna it's, it's the watching, whatever. But I'm gonna play it. All right, probably all right. break some copyright infringement rules, but it's okay. So, here we go. This man I know. This is Kobe Jam or James wait, Music. Wait, wait, wait. It's about to go hard. It's about to go hard. I know. I'm just making sure we don't copyright oh, French. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I like it. Like, come on, man. I like it. Who this writes like, a punk that's pop got, rock? That's got like, 182. That, well, it's got like Hawk Nelson feel to it about Stephen Curtis. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it, that's what that's made good. me laugh so hard. I like, like it's it. my pop punk genre singing about your, like, one of the great artists. And then they're like, radio hasn't been the same. Uh, radio hasn't been the same since 1984 with his big old mullet. Well, people might have like people might be like, why the heck, guys? Did you just play this? But you know, just, it just it tapped into the RTC world of our Stephen Curtis Chapman jokes, and I'm diving in, or let's dive in. Let's let's dive it in. Let's so, go deep. So I don't know how to transition. In over my head, I want to leap. There you go, Sabrina. <laughs> Lost in the flow. No. All right. <laughs> anyway, so today I don't again, know how to transition out of again that. is a that's a very awkward moment two. in the podcast. I'm sorry, guys. This is the <laughs> follow up to last week of the. Uh, hopefully you guys are tracking. All right, so us. thirty second recap of last week. So, Go. Oh, geez. why I hate when you do that because I'm not ready for it. Like, let me scoot in here and get my notes. I can do it. So, th- okay, give me a thirty second. The recap thirty of last second week. recap. We talked about that. The that uh, there are I, three distinct persons of the Trinity: God the Father, yep. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then we looked at the Bible to find the answers to those, and we also looked at church history that it wasn't a load of crap that was made up later. <laughs> wow, that was a very crude way of stating last week's episode. <laughs> I had 30 seconds, but it was all I there. had 30 seconds. So yeah, so we covered a lot of the history, um, a lot of scripture. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to cover some scripture today, and then I'm going to give you a ton of references because we have so much more material to get through Whoa, today. That's a lot of references. It's a ton of references. So rather than going through every single scripture, I'm going to give you the reference, grab your pen, grab a piece of paper, or where all these references come from. They come from several articles. I, I'm going to put the articles in the show notes. I would encourage you to study deeper into this topic on your own. All so right, here we go. Buckle we're, up, We're going to dive into, uh, is the Trinity found in the Bible? Which we kind of 
talked about a little bit last week. We're going to dive deeper into it today. So um, all this uh, information comes from uh, realfaith.com. I just want to let you guys know. So it will be in the show notes, uh, and then we'll talk about it. So uh, number one, there is one God. Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Galatians 3, 20. Also says now a mediator is uh, now a mediator is not just for one person alone, but God is one. First Timothy two five through six says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all, a testimony at the proper time. Okay, so fact number one: there is one God. There's one God, and that's we, it. And we see several times, and there's many, 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 many. This is just some references. This is not all references where it talks about there is only one God. And uh, remember from last week, there's three distinct p- persons, one essence, right? Essence, person, different. Essence of God. So there is only one. But there's God. one God. All right. So one G-O-D. <laughs> number two, the Trinity. Consi- I feel like I'm giving like the David Letterman top 10 list. Number 10. Or Sports Center top 10. <laughs> All right. Number two, the Trinity consists of three persons. Genesis 126 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, which we talked about last week. According to our likeness, they will rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. Genesis 322 says, The Lord God said, Since the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, he must not reach out, take from the tree of life, and live forever. Uh, I'm sorry, eat and live forever. Uh, Matthew 3, 16 through 17 says, When Jesus was baptized, he was immediately uh, he went up immediately from the water. The heavens suddenly opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down. And the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, who am I, who, whom I am well pleased. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father One. and of the Son. Two. And of the Holy Spirit. Three. Second Corinthians 13, 13 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Again, that was Paul and the chapter 13, 2 Corinthians. In Genesis 1, 1, again, uh, the Hebrew plural noun Elohim, so it's a Hebrew that we talked about, I alluded to this discussion last week, mm-hmm. uh, is used in Genesis 1, 26, 3, 22, 11, 7, and Isaiah 6, 8. The plural pronoun for us is used. The word Elohim and the pronoun us are plural plural forms, uh, definitely referring in the Hebrew language to more than two. So not not just one, not just two, but more than two. Uh, while this is not explicit, an explicit argument for the Trinity, it does denote the aspect of plurality in God. The Hebrew word for God, Elohim, definitely allows for the Trinity. Again, the Old Testament, like we said last week, does not contradict the doctrine of the Trinity. Right. And so, so far we've seen that there's one God, but also in the same scriptures, both Old Testament and two, it does break up God into different, I don't want to say parts because that's not true, sure. but into different distinct persons. Essences. Yes. Persons. persons. Yeah. Uh, one essence, three persons, distinct. Yeah, that's different essences. Yeah. I mean, so, there's three persons but, of the Trinity. But yeah. we also see that there's plurality in the Hebrew words that were used back in those Old Testament scripture, which would allow not for singular. more than two. Right. More it's, than two. It's not singular, right? Elohim. So okay. uh, in Isaiah 48, 16 and 61, 6, the Son is speaking while referring to the Father and the Holy Spirit. Compare Isaiah 61, uh, 61, 1 to Luke 4, 14 through 19 to see that it is the Son speaking. So it, it basically Basically, Isaiah in, in those scriptures is saying what the son is going to say. And then uh, Luke 14, 4, 14 through 19 is actually Jesus saying what Isaiah was saying. Okay. It was the son speaking. Uh, Matthew three sixteen through 17, which we just read, which was when Jesus was being baptized and raised up, uh, described the event of Jesus' baptism. Seen in the passage is God the Holy Spirit dispen- descending on God the Son while God the Father proclaims his pleasure in the son matthew 28 19 and second corinthians 13 is it supposed to be 13 there is no 13 14 but in the article they mis put that but uh, our examples of three distinct persons in the trinity which again we just 
read Paul exiting out the grace of our Lord Jesus right, Christ, like it's the not, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It's not like it's three all. different modes or different parts of the same God because they were all three present at the exact same time. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Three persons. He, he, Paul named in, in 2 Corinthians 13 three persons. Uh, in, in Matthew, we see Matthew describing three persons, right? The, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit descending like a dove, the uh, God the Son being raised up, and God the Father speaking. Three distinct, not the same, three different. Uh, the, okay, so number three. The members of the Trinity are distinguished one from another in various passages. In the Old Testament, Lord, capital L-O-R-D, is distinguished from Lord, capital L, lowercase O-R-D. Mm-hmm. Genesis 19.24 and Hosea 1.4, the right. big Lord has a son, Psalm 20, or sorry, Psalm 2.7, and Psalm 2.12, Proverbs 30, 2 through 4. The Spirit is distinguished from the big Lord. I say big Lord, that's the capital L, capital right, O, capital in, R, in, capital In B. Old Testament times, that's a, what that was God's personal name of Yahweh, right? right? exactly, yep. yep. We see it, when exactly. we see all four letter caps, yeah. Yep, that's, that's Yahweh, which is different from the Son. The and sun. now we're seeing that it's also separate from the Spirit. Right, and from God, uh, I'm sorry, so the Spirit is distinguished from We'll say we'll call it Yahweh. We'll, we'll call it the big big Lord Yahweh, but they're saying Lord uh, from Numbers twenty seven eighteen and from God Psalm fifty one ten through twelve. God the Son is distinguished from God the Father in Psalm forty five six through seven and Hebrews one eight and nine. In the New Testament, Jesus speaks to the Father about sending a Helper, the Holy Spirit, in John fourteen sixteen through seventeen. This shows that Jesus did not consider himself to be the Father or the Holy Spirit. Consider also all the other times in the gospel where Jesus speaks to the Father. Was he speaking to himself? No, he spoke to another person in the Trinity to the Father. That's who he spoke to. Again, we're gonna. Well, this is rapid fire. We have a lot of content to get. Right. Through. I mean, I mean, basically, we're just <laughs> bolstering up the fact of the Trinity is found because so it's far we've seen that there is over and over there's and one over God. Again. It's three persons, but right. they're all distinguished now. So exactly. it's not three that are the same. It's three that are very separate. Right. And and again, number four is again we're stating the same thing. Each member of the Trinity is God. The Father is God. John six twenty seven. Romans one seven. First Peter one two. The Son is God. John one one. John 1 14, Romans 9 5, Colossians 2 9, Hebrews 1 8, 1 John 5 20. And the Holy Spirit is God, Acts 5 3, 5 3 through 4, and 1 Corinthians 3 16. So uh, I'm just going to pick at random from these, okay? So God the Father, we're going to go Romans 1 7. Let's see if mine pulls up as fast as yours did. Says, uh, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and not not God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, but God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Very distinct, right? Distinguished them. So there's God the Father, and He is God. The Father is God. The Son is God. Uh, we're gonna go. Well, let's just stay in Romans. Stay in Romans. Kind of like John one is in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word right. was God, and then oh, then verse fourteen. Um, well, no, you click it and then you click it again, and then fourteen talks about the fact that Jesus took up residence with us. Like that's what verse right. fourteen is. So Romans nine five says, "To them belong the uh, patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is Christ, who is God over all, blessed, blessed forever." Amen. Again, so we're showing that the Son now, right? So we have a distinction. God the Father, He is God. God the Son, who is God overall. And I got the Holy Spirit for you. Acts 5, 3, and 4 says, But Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back yourself part of the proceeds of the land? This is what we're talking about when people sold all they had and then give it to the disciples. And then Ananias and Sapphira had this whole plan to be like, Hey, let's say we did it, but we didn't. Um, And it says, So... um, but why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? To continue on, it says, while it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. Mm. So in verse three, it says that you lied to the Holy Spirit. And right. then verse four, it says, well, yeah, you, you lied, lied to, to God. God. Right, exactly. So so we see, and, and again, we gave all those, those references, but we see in those three that we just picked out, um, the distinction that, God the Father is God, God the Son is God, and God the Holy Spirit is God. So if there's only, if we go back, right, mm-hmm. we said in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, there's only one God. And yet we see these three persons are all called God, right? So again, essence of God, three distinct persons. 
Number five, there is a subordination within the Trinity. So what does subordination mean? Uh, you just had to ask that, didn't you? But basically sure it means that there's like a, a certain ranking. Like, so, um, the, uh, that they're not kind of le- like a less like than, a but boss, it's, it's manager. It's, yes, employee. yes. There's a, there's a certain role, right. That they play. So, uh, there's subordination within the Trinity. Scripture shows that the Holy spirit is subordinate to the father and the son and the son is subordinate to the father. This is an internal relationship and does not deny the deity of any person of the Trinity. This is simply an area which our finite minds cannot understand concerning the infinite God. Concerning the Son, uh, see Luke twenty two forty two, John five thirty six, and John twenty twenty one. You want to pull up? You got one? Yeah, Luke two twenty two forty two says, saying, "Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours." Mm, so he's subordinate. He's not saying his will, but the Father's will. Um, and John one four. Okay, concerning the Holy Spirit, see John fourteen sixteen, which you just mentioned not too long ago. Why don't we just go ahead and pull that one up? And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you for forever. So we see right there, the Trinity is right there, right? I, this is Jesus speaking, I will ask the Father to send you the comforter. To the send Spirit. you the comforter. So it's not saying the comforter is either one of them. There's three distinct. And we can see that that is that the, the, the Holy Spirit is being sent by the Father and the Son in that subordinate mm-hmm. Relationship, <laughs> I guess. Well, it's, it's the same one to another. I mean, they're the same. Right. It's it's the same idea for like an employee or an, a manager or a boss. I mean, I mean, sometimes we can kind of skew this a little bit, but the idea is the fact of just because someone's a manager and then someone's an assistant manager and then someone's an employee doesn't actually well, change the person's worth in and of themselves. However, they have to submit to the roles in the company. It's just different roles, right? Because right. they're they're not less than one another. Right. They are all co. Uh, that's, that's, that's a bad illustration. That's why it's hard right. to explain the Trinity. Right, exactly. So it's not really like a boss in a system. It's like they're all the boss, but they have different role. Like you have, and the, but they submit this to one guy, another as well. This guy is a division manager of this, and this guy is a division manager of this. But they work like they 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 have the same goal in mind, the same will, the same everything. They're they're on an equal playing field, but they have different roles mm-hmm. within that corporation. I guess if we're going, yeah, to I mean, that. and that goes into your next point. Then where so, each part of the Trinity has different tasks. Yeah, to so complete too. exactly. So uh, yeah, each individual members of the Trinity has different tasks. This is number six. So the Father is the ultimate source of the cause of the universe. First Corinthians eight six, Revelation four eleven. Uh, divine revelations, Revelation 1, 1, salvation, John 3, 16 through 17, and Jesus, Jesus' human works, John 5, 17, 14, 10. The Father initiates all these things. So um, the Father has, is the ultimate source of the cause of the universe. Pick any one of those scriptures. Uh, we'll go 1 Corinthians. How about that? You bet. First uh, Corinthians 8, 6 says, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things, and through all, uh, through whom we exist. So again, let me let me read that again. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all are. I'm sorry, from whom this are is what happens when we read the yeah, E as V and not the right. C as B. <laughs> from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. So uh, the son is the agent through whom the father does the following works, the creation and maintenance of the universe, divine revelation and salvation. The father does all these things through the son who functions as his agent. And we see that in first Corinthians eight, six, which we just read uh, John one, three uh, Colossians one, 16 through 17, John one, one, John 16 through 12 through 15, Matthew 11, 27 revelation 1 1 second corinthians 5 19 matthew 121 and john 4 42 the holy are you going to read one of those or now let's keep cruising okay the holy spirit is the means by whom the father does the following works creation and maintenance of the universe divine revelation salvation and jesus's works thus the father does all things by the power of the holy spirit 
So there's a lot there. there. There's, there's a lot there, right? So, well, uh, but, but each member of the Trinity has their own they have, task they, that they are commissioned exactly, to do. Exactly, or a different role. You know, they have they have these different roles within the relationship. So, so far, when we kind of put the Trinity into perspective, I mean, the last episode was just kind of proving the point that it's in the Bible. Right. And this kind of goes more into, like what you said, like last week was more 50,000. This is more 10,000 foot view. Right. Where it talks about that in the Bible, we see that there's only one God, but we see three separate distinct persons in all the scriptures um, and then they're distinguished from one another then they sub- like they kind of fill into different roles and they subordinate themselves or they serve one another based right. on the tasks that they are given and they've been commissioned to do which isn't it funny how like you, you see kind of how the trinity works and then you tie it into what god tells us to do through like paul and, and the writers of the new testament of uh, if you love one another, serve one another. You know, it's constantly like that's because that's the way that God's relationship works, right? right. And, and even the Bible says that the 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 um, su- such are the least of these. Like God calls us right. to humbly serve one another, not kind of like you know James and John, the sons of thunder, and their mom was like, "Hey, yo, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, can you like put them at your right and your left?" And Jesus is like, "No, whoever's last shall be first, and whoever's first right. shall be last." And we're called to literally, you know, put ourselves lower to somebody in order right. to show them honor and respect. It's kind of like in the, uh, I saw this on Instagram where like, it's like the Asian culture or something like that, where it's like when you bow to one another during a marriage ceremony, the idea is kind of supposed to go lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. Right. Just show the fact of, no, 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 I will do anything I can to serve you. Well, and so if we take at the essence of God, right, God mm-hmm. is love, and we can kind of see this a little bit through um, like the love of the father for the son mm-hmm. and the love of the son for the father. And, and how this works. So you, you start seeing the essence of God, that God is being God and the essence of God loving himself because love is God and God is love. Right. And like you see how this and is all And I think this working, is where it gets right? confusing, though, when we look at the Old Testament, though, because it's seen, and, and, and again, maybe we don't have time to get into this this episode or, or whatnot, but I think, like, you know, this is where people get confused because when we see Jesus, Jesus is full of love and mercy and compassion, but then it seems like the Old Testament God is out there whacking a fool. Yeah, you well... Know? Uh, there's a reason for that. And then that. the Holy Spirit is growing things. There's different theories to even that, you know, because uh, I've heard it taught that um, it was because God had his His chosen people establishing the kingdom on earth, and the only times that God was really whacking people was when they were infringing upon his chosen people. Well, right? not even the, just that, but a lot of times, too, like the Canaanites and other people, I mean, these were doing the most, gre- these were the most grievous wicked. things yes. ever. Right. When no one ever, ever questions us trying to go in and stop the Holocaust from happening right. or stop all the and Russian that's, And that's what was happening, like right? The, yeah. And so when God said, go wipe these people out, it was because they were the most immoral of the most immoral. Like the the men, the women, the children, everything was so immoral that it's like just go away. Because if out. we take the truth of Second Peter, where God is not willing that any should perish, but also come to eternal life, because God is not patient how as we understand. Right. It. Well, what is that looking in an eternal perspective? Right. Too? Exactly. And then I mean, we've seen it. He does it. He's done it. He did it with the flood, and he's going to do it in the end. Right. It's going to be as in the days of Noah. Right. Mm-hmm. Is, is how it's going to be in the end. And so, uh, you you see that God can, is going to tolerate immorality and evil for so long and then it eventually he's going to say no i gotta wipe it i, I gotta it's no we're, we're done with this but so so going back into the trinity then sure. you know part of the question and, pe- and people try to they they, they try to rationalize their mind because okay so this is what the bible says because a lot of these things that we're going to talk about here in a bit with the different heresies yeah. they all try to stay true to scripture and they all try to have an understanding of how the trinity works mm-hmm. so why were these things that we're about to talk about deemed as heresy so i think what happens is is rather than taking what we do know at face value right mm-hmm. and saying hey for the things we can't explain just saying hey we just can't explain, we can't uh, explain uh, it like the mystery people, of i think it. people try to get into explaining it and start speculating and then that's where they off the trail, you know, they kind of take a hard right and then they they just start teaching stuff that is totally against script what scripture is actually saying. So they take their speculations and they build upon their speculations, which lead them down to And to I think we still teaching. do this today in some regards because oh, in, in our brains we want everything well, to make sense we, we perfectly see, and logically we and see philosophically. A, we right? see a huge movement of that with the the name it claim it culture, right? Okay. They took they took some stuff out of the scripture. And they speculated what they thought it meant, or what we call misinterpret. Mm-hmm. And then they built a whole theology 
out of speculation, which was wrong and against scripture. It wasn't what scripture was saying. It was a misinterpretation of what scripture. So you see how the, even in today's culture, it can happen. And we've talked about it in, in the same regards with like, okay, how does the sovereignty of God work with free will of man? And this is a struggle that we can never fully explain. Right. So we try to explain it the best that we can well, with our own understanding. And that, and that's why you know, most traditional Christians would say that the Bible is non-contradictory, right? Mm-hmm. The Bible does not contradict itself, and any doctrine that we look at, if we if we really truly believe that the Bible does not contradict itself, then all of our doctrines should line up exactly with Scripture. And if it contradicts it, then it's probably something wrong with our doctrine, mm. not with Scripture. Right. So so let's jump into some of these these heresies that we're going to talk. I, yeah, I, I so love talking about some of these heresies. We're just going to we're just going to cover briefly some of the heresies that have happened in, in the past, and just quickly go through them and touch base, and then we're going to talk about how all this applies to us and why we believe it today. So now that we've kind of gone through what it is. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about what it is. Now let's talk about some of the heresy. They were de- These were deemed as heresy by the church. I'm not just calling them heresy. This was actually the church, the early church saying, no, these are heresy. Um, so the first is modalism, which we touched on a little bit. And actually, can I pause uh, you real episode? quick for yeah. this one? A lot of times people will talk about that, the oh, the church, the most powerful and the most rich or whatever, chose the, 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 the heresy and the doctrine of the church. But I don't think people realize that this stuff was debated sometimes for years. Decades. Decades. And then finally, they, they it, it, right. it's kind of like when I was on jury duty. You know, right. we had to deliberate for th- three hours, three and a half hours well, to come to a consensus. So it's not like, oh, just, we, the, we walked away three hours later. Whoever was the, had the bigger, badder, most threatening argument sure. won. I mean, well, look at the look at the canon of the scripture, right? And, and the decades of debate that went on just to canonize the scripture and say, look, these are the specifications which we're going to have when we choose the scripture. And I think that shows the tenacity and the the hope and prayer of the early saints to truly follow God well, and, and how he and, and how and, we can understand it. And you have to trust just as God had led the writers to write the books that we have to trust that God led these these church leaders, these church fathers into looking at everything thoroughly and, and coming up with And these sometimes things. like you know, good old jolly St. Nick. Sometimes you got to punch a fool. Sometimes you got to punch a dude out. <laughs> Maybe not really. We probably shouldn't. But St. Nick not. did punch Arian. So yeah, right? Arius. Well, Arius. Ari- yeah, Arius. So let's talk about that in a second. But let's, let's so, do it, bro. I didn't mean to cut you off. So let's rock and roll. Modalism. First one. Modalism teaches that God is successively Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is not simultaneously Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Modalism is a heresy that does not view the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as three particular persons in relation but merely as three modes or manifestations of the one divine person of God. God revealed himself successfully in salvation history, first as father, creator, and lawgiver, then as son, redeemer, and finally as spirit, sustainer, and giver of grace. For a modalist, the God of the Old Testament is the father, in the, car, in the in the incarnation, God was manifested in Jesus. Then after the resurrection and ascension of Christ, God came in the mode of the Holy Spirit. However, the baptism of Jesus and Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane uh, reveal clearly that the three person con- la, 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 the three persons converse with each other simultaneously. So there's a there's that video we always joke about. So if you ever want to like just look up that's modalism, Patrick. That's the funny YouTube video we always talk about yeah. with modalism. Yeah. So uh, w- l- let's real quick. Why why is this uh, why is this a heresy? I mean, it, it, you got to give this this idea credit because it's trying to lean into the fact so hard that God is one. Right. There's the, only the one God, God. Right. but it's trying to do it in such a way that I think we can physically understand. I think it's trying to justify how we interpret certain things in Scripture to understand that this is how God works. Now, we do have to admit that in the Old Testament, we primarily saw a lot of God the Father, and then in the Gospels, we see well, God the Son but a lot. That's essential. Did we? But they're the central figure points because we see even God, God, God the Son, right? Is is he showed up all over the Old Testament too? Well, yeah. uh, his presumed Angel to be well, exactly. Well, he was presumed to. You see, uh, if you dig into the Hebrew, that uh, in the meeting with Abraham before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, um, that the the God that or the the Lord that was there with talking with Abraham, the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, called down fire from the Lord of heaven. 
is I, I'd have to go back and pull it up. I, it was an interesting fact that I read in, in one of the articles. Right. That, that there was a distinction made there, and so it's believed to be Jesus was the one meeting with Abraham, and that, and then it refers back to when uh, Jesus was revealing himself somewhat. He said, before Abraham was, well, I, I am. Right, exactly. So he's saying, right. hey, I predated Abraham, and I was there. I talked to Abraham. Right, but I mean, but what we see as the main, I would say, main central figure point. Now, we see the Old Testament is all pointing towards the Messiah, then the gospel is the Messiah, and then the New Testament is looking back at the Messiah to ultimately look forward to the ultimate Jesus returning and coming back Messiah's king. Sure. And so we, we can see the gospel narrative throughout the all entirety of scripture, but I see them trying to have this struggle with no God is one. So he can't be three. He just can't right. be three, but it's the fact of, but it's trying to, it's trying to fit a square, it's trying to fit into a box. It's trying to fit a square peg in a round hole, right? It, 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 because we don't understand the round hole. They're like, well, I got the square one. Let me try to force it in here. And it does not fit. And, and what they're saying does not line, align with scripture. Right. So that's that's modalism. And, and again, the common thing that I've heard with modalism is like the, the essence of water, right? Uh, of water is ice and gas and... and uh, it's all water, but it all happens right. at different so, moments. Solid, liquid, and, and gaseous states. Yep. And, and they come in different modes. Uh, and, and we actually see this even modalism creeps into today's culture. If you've ever heard of the book, The Shack. Oh, where, okay. Where, where God came as the the uh, the old black woman and then the young child. And then like these were different. Shut up in different ways. And I know like Bishop T.D. Right. Jakes is he's been I mean, he he started to change a little bit, but he was very much a oneness Pentecostal, which is a version of modalism. Right. Um, a lot of Stephen Furtick stuff is starting to come out more as the modalism and the oneness theology with yes. that, too. So Big one time. oneness theology is the modern version of modalism, right? Right. Yep, definitely. Okay. So uh, the next one is, what is it? Arianism. Arianism, thank you. Uh, Ari- I, this is my favorite Arianism one. Arianism was the early heretical teaching about the identity of Jesus Christ, found yep. primarily on the teachings of Arius, who got punched out. <laughs> That's why it's just so funny to me. The, the central characteristic of Arian thought was that because God is one, Jesus could not have been truly God. In order to deal with the scriptural testimony to the exalted status of Christ, Arius and his followers proposed that Jesus was the highest created being of God. So although Christ was fully human, he was not fully God. Arius' teaching was condemned as heretical at the Council of Nicaea in A.D. 325. Right, so that it wasn't in the beginning Jesus was. It's the fact of in the beginning Jesus became. Right, so sadly, uh, Arianism is the official teaching of Jehovah Witnesses, which was founded in 1881 by Charles Taze Russell. This group teaches that there is no biblical basis for the doctrine of the Trinity. They teach that there is one solitary divine being from all eternity. The divine being is Jehovah God, the creator and the preserver of the universe in all things. Jehovah's Witnesses essentially believe that Arius, what Arius taught in the third century, namely that Christ is not God, but rather God's first created creature. Thus, Jesus is the archangel Michael, who is mentioned in the Old Testament. Neither is the spirit divine, but rather more of a cosmic force of Jehovah. So, Which, when see, you read the actual scriptures, that's... Totally, punch. totally against what scripture says. Apparently punch worthy. Yeah, well, definitely. <laughs> Get him, Saint. <laughs> Saint Nick. Good old Saint Nick. Uh, but it's sad to see that that uh, we see again, right? Just as we saw modalism creeping in into our culture and time and day, that Arianism is also creeped into uh, the culture of this day and even centuries before uh, through the Jehovah's Witness. And they, they still firmly believe in this, mm-hmm. firmly um, so we need a St. Nicholas to, to, to step and up. We'll, and we'll talk about this in the next episode about Christ's baptism because Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus became the Christ at his baptism. Right, right. So uh, the last thing that I kind of want to mention here uh, is tritheism. So tritheism teaches that the Trinity consists of three equal, independent, and autonomous beings, each of whom is divine. Tritheism stresses the plurality of the Godhead. Many human analogies for the Trinity actually convey tritheism instead uh, examples include the erroneous analogy that the trinity is like an egg with three yep. parts a yolk white and shell which i've heard i've heard that one a lot and that's the thing it's like anytime, in sunday school typically anytime you try to explain the trinity we can never fully explain it so this is what i was always taught when i was told when you explain the trinity do this give a bunch of different 
examples and say this still isn't even close. Like like St. Patrick used the the three leaf clover, three right. separate leaves, but it all is one three leaf clover. But that's still modalism, right? Um, water. Well, that's more tritheism. Trithe, but yeah, 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 tritheism. Um, but then like the egg, and then there's water, and right. the, so any example that we try to have to, to explain the Trinity all ends up being a, like it all falls short. So, I don't want to say just say it all becomes a heresy, and that's but why, it all falls short. That's why I think the best way to say, here's the best way to describe the, the Trinity and you start going through the scriptures. Here's where we see the triune God. We don't fully understand the triune God, but here's where we see it over and over and over And honestly, and, and this is again. where it's hard in our f- like finite human state. And this is where I come back to sometimes with the fact of if we can fully understand God, and this is my same argument for the, like, like hyper-Calvinist or hyper-Arminian, for the fact of if we can fully explain how God works and put God in a box and we can say, you know, package him up real nice and go, boop, here's your box and here's exactly how God works. Right. Does he, is he, is he really big enough to be God or did we just create a can, God to be fashioned a God yeah. in our own image? Can, uh, can a creature understand the creator to its fullest extent? No, no. And, I, and, I and this is where so. it comes to, uh, if, uh, you know, rather than in God, you know, in the old Testament it says, you know, don't make gods, gods for yourself in your own image. Right. And, you know, Christians were made fun of all the time because, you know, it was the fact of like, like the Romans and everyone else called early Christians and, and even Jews to some extent atheists because like, Oh, you don't have a God. Like this is our God. We can see who our God is. Right. When in reality, it's like, we don't fully get it, and we don't fully we, we 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 read how it works, but we don't fully we understand only, how it does. We only know what God has revealed to us, and then once we do, are we then creating a God in our own mental image? Maybe not yeah. visually, but are we then creating? You yeah, know, you have to be careful. Are, are we creating false gods yeah. that we need to believe in because now we understand it? Sure, sure. Well, and anything, any type. If we believe God is not the God of the Bible, then we've already created an idol in our own own mind Mm -hmm. god is the god of the bible and everything that's in the bible that was stated about god probably true (laughs) so this last little bit here that i want to go through and it's going to take a little bit and and we can talk about these points along the way okay Um, but this comes from the gospel coalition and it's the five reasons the trinity matters so much so why does the trinity actually matter and apply to us today why do we believe what we believe mark why so this is i thought this was a, a good little a uh, talking point article for us. All right, let's do it. So many assume Muslims, Jews, and Christians worship the same God. In reality, Muslims and non-Messianic Jews profess a monopersonal God rather than a tripersonal God of the Trinity. This distinction is critical. A mono, a monopersonal God could not be eternally loving and gracious. Before he created the world, he couldn't have loved. At least he couldn't have, uh, he could have only loved himself. Uh, he would be, best be defined in his solitude by self-serving egotism that leads to the worldview prioritizing power as opposed to our Christian worldview that considers love the most important commandment and enduring virtue, Matthew 22, 36 through 40, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. We believe God never has or will change. We believe God is love, 1 John 4, 8. The Trinity explains how God was loved before he created the three persons divinely and eternally loved uh, loved one another. He has always in himself been defined by love. At the same time, our tri-personnel, our tri-personnel, our mm-hmm. tri-personal God must be distinguished from polytheism. For example, the Brahma, Vishnu, and the Shiva of Hinduism. We do not worship three gods. The Lord our God is one, Deuteronomy 6, 4. As world religions continue to multiply and against a rising tide of universalism, the distinctive will only become more essential to how we communicate our faith. So again, we are we are not monopersonal God followers, mm-hmm. and we are not polythe- polytheistic God worshipers. We we don't we don't worship multiple gods, but we don't believe that God was only like the only, there's three there's three pers- persons in one essence right one, I mean it's, it's, so so I think it's a it's a multi faceted point where the fact of okay so this is what separates us from Muslims with with Allah right and because their ver- their word of Allah is God and that's why we have to make sure we use you know God's personal name when we try to do you know some sort of bridge crossing where it's the sure. fact of no 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 the God of the scriptures of the Jewish scriptures well, Yahweh and they also believe don't believe in Jesus as the son of he's God. Just a prophet. He, he's just a prophet. Right? He's just a prophet. So it does distinct us from other religions like 
you know, Muslim faith, but it also separates us from supposed other Christian sects like the Jehovah Witness, like the Mormons, yes. like all these other groups is the fact of the Trinity is the pinnacle Orthodox Christian belief because by it, all things were created, all things were redeemed, all right. things will be restored. Right. And so if we don't have the Trinity, we don't have well, the God of the Bible. I, and then it's a complete, like you said, yep. it's completely separate from all the other religions. Right. And then if we say, okay, so if all religions are true, we have to look and see what each religion says is true. And so if Christianity says, um, no, all you guys aren't true, if we believe that's true, then that can't make anything else true. Right. And so the philosophical argument goes on, by who are you going to stand? And that's why Jesus is the center of our worship. Right. Well, and and again, we have to establish our baselines as Christian. What's our baseline? The scripture. And what's the scripture said? Well, there's three persons and one essence of God. There's only one God, but there's three roles within that are working within. Right. And how do we know the that three that's persons truth. with different roles working within that one? And God. then the question is, how do we know that is the the not not just how is it true, but how is it the exclusive truth? Is the fact of Jesus died and rose again. Right. Yeah. The, and so that means he is who he said he was and right. that he accomplished what he said he accomplished and he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Exactly. So number two, the Trinity makes sense of the Old Testament. Oh, okay. So the early church coined the term Trinity in the late second century to articulate the mystery revealed by Christ, Ephesians 1, 9 and Ephesians 3, 3. But the first glimpses of plurality within God are recorded in the Old Testament, not the new. From the first chapter, the spirit of God is introduced in Genesis 1, 2, which is where he's hovering over the water. And God refers to himself by the plural pronouns we and us in Genesis 1, 26 to 27. 322, 11, 7, Isaiah 6, 8. While the oneness of God is strongly emphasized, the word used to describe God as one in Hebrew scripture, ehud, is the elastic term that can be used to describe unity and diversity. Similarly, Elohim and Adonai used for God in the Old Testament are plural terms, perhaps foreshadowing a reality not yet fully revealed. More than a hundred times, the Old Testament mentions the Spirit of God. It also teaches of the coming defeater of the enemy, Genesis 3, uh, 15, a son of man appearing with the Ancient of Days, Daniel 7, 9 through 14, a son to be revered, Psalm 2, 11 through 12, a virgin birth of a child called Mighty God and Everlasting Father, Isaiah 9, 6, and the angel of the Lord acknowledged as God himself, Genesis 16, 10 through 13, Genesis 22, 12 through 16, Exodus 3, 1 through 6, Judges 2, 1 through 4, Judges 6, 11 through 24, and Zechariah 12, 8. Drawing from Exodus alone, the Gospels identify Christ as the I am, Exodus 3, 14, and John 8, 56 through 58, the rock in the wilderness, Exodus 17, 1 Corinthians 10, through, uh, 10, 4, and the one who saved the Israelites from Egypt, Jude 5. The risen Christ interprets things concerning himself throughout all scripture, Luke 24, 27, and even used Psalm 110, 1 to prove the Jews' innate assumption of a second person in the Godhead. So isn't that cool, like, how all of this is tying together, right? We see we see that the, the Trinity in the Old Testament over a hundred times, mentioned over a hundred times, and then Christ is, when he comes in his ministry on earth, He's tying it back to, hey, here's Exodus. It's the here's ultimate Genesis, fulfillment of all these right. things. Like, like even Psalms, like I, w I wanted to pull up the Psalm 110.1. It says the Psalm of David. It says, the right. Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies my footstool, which goes Ooh. kind of into like Philippians 2 where right. he emptied himself. So, But then when he died and rose again, he was ascended to the right given hand the of the name Father. above all names, at the right hand of the Father. And at one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Exactly. So, king. so we see that the Trinity does not indeed does not contradict the Old Testament, but actually the Old Testament affirms again the Trinity. So we're seeing it throughout Scripture once again. Okay. Uh, so number three, the Trinity provides a framework for the New Testament. So and you, and you alluded to this, right? You said it was the the looking forward. Uh, uh, the Old Testament was pointing forward to Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, Christ was not a created human who conjunctured a self-originated way of coming to God. While he was fully human, he was also fully God. And he had been from the beginning, John 1, 1, and will be forever. This is difficult to explain, but the Trinity helps. It also helps explain passages in which all three members of the Trinity appear. The Father sends the Spirit in the Son's name, 
John 14, 26. All the Father has in the sons, and the Spirit declares these things to us, John 16, 15. The Father sends the Spirit of the Son into our hearts, Romans 8, 9, Galatians 4, 6, Titus 3, 6. We baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, Matthew 28, 19. Through the Son, we have access in one Spirit to the Father, Ephesians 2, 18. And the Father's love, the Son's grace, and the Spirit's fellowship are always with us, 2 Corinthians 13, 13. Boom. <laughs> it's just like, it's just more. I love it. It's just it's more just, and more. It just continues to to tie in together over and over and over and over again. Right. Like, like, like I how the Old Testament obviously, you know, alludes to it. And then the New Testament is affirms explicit it. about yeah, it. It just straight up affirms it. So uh, number four, the Trinity is the basis of our relationship to God and his church. Because the Father, Son, and Spirit were perfectly unified before the creation of the world, loving, serving, and glorifying one another, we could be confident God didn't create us out of a needy desire to fill an inner relational void, which sometimes you, you hear that all the time. Well, see, God, God, he saves me because he needed me, and he wants to have a relationship with me. And, and it's like, no, nah, he didn't need you. He had all the love that he ever needed. He didn't have to have a relationship. He's doing this because he wanted to do this. Uh, that is the good news for us because we never could do that. He was perfectly fulfilled without us, yet he lovingly chose to create us, inviting us into joy and uh, be fulfilled by the overflowing of God in within. Uh, I'm sorry. The overflow of all God is within himself. As the church, we are the household of the Father, 1 Timothy 3.15, the bride of the Son, 2 Corinthians 11, 2, Ephesians 5, 27, Revelation 19, 7, and the temple of the spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. All right. You still hit with me? You still hanging? I am, well, you still you tracking? Know, it's, well, it's my, my brain's thinking a thousand different thoughts right now. That's why I'm quiet because you, your boy's thinking. Um, from an outsider's perspective, it almost seems like a really odd big game God's playing. Like, he, he already had all the love he needed. He didn't need nobody. He didn't need to fill a void that was missing in the world, so therefore he created us. But it's like he didn't need us, but he created us knowing that we would sin, knowing that, you know, plan A was always the, you know, Jesus sacrificing himself on the cross and then redeeming our, ourselves, and then he will restore all things, and then we're good to go for the rest of eternity. And it's such a, you can get stuck in the the mental gymnastics and just, like, honestly, shrivel up because of it and and so it's like in some regards like i'm thinking of like like there's the two responses of like whoa this is awesome versus like whoa this is crazy see i'm like this is awesome <laughs> i guess i'm on that fence i'm like wow this is so cool that, and, and, and whatever that he I loved get. us so much that he chose that he wanted to create us because he knew from the beginning of time from before the beginning of time that this was the plan all along and that's that the hard he part because we us. don't fully understand it nor will i mean you know like we know the mystery of the gospel right and at some point it's like we're looking into a a mirror, like a fogged mirror, one day all things will be made known unto us. Right. It's just up to that point. It's like, dang. And yeah. this is where faith comes in, like where Hebrews is, you know, faith is the the evidence. Oh, no. Um, faith is the assurance of things. Oh, no, no. Wow, I'm really messing it up. Uh, Hebrews 11. 1. Faith is the essence of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Right. And so it goes back to not seeing evidence. You know what I mean? So it's the fact that we have enough evidence that it was seeing Jesus that we can know that we have faith and taking that next step. Sure. But it's, it's still mentally hard to wrap our brains around too. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I let's, let's dive in the last point and then we'll kind of land the plane here. I know it's been a lot of information. Again, this will all be in the show notes. Yeah. Now faith is the assurance of things we've hoped for. There it is. Not the essence, the assurance. Essence is the Trinity. Yeah. So number five, the Trinity explains ultimately our mission, right? our mm -hmm. mission as followers. Uh, as we see the Father sending the Son and the Son sending the Spirit, so we see our own great commission as the continuation of the Trinity's mission in the world. John 17, 18, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. We too are sent according to the foreknowledge of the Father for obedience to the Son in the sanctification of the Spirit. 1 Peter 1, 2. As each person of the Godhead glorifies the other, we are invited to, Invited, this is the cool thing. We are invited to glorify and testify to God also throughout the world he made. At the cross, we see the ultimate glorification of the Father as the Son lays down his life for us in order that we might receive the spirit of adoption as children of God, John 12, 
28, Romans 8, 15. And we likewise are called to lay our lives down for others, John 15, 13, glorifying God as we do. In this way, we carry on Missio Dea, the mission of the triune God. I thought that was a, a good a way, way to, end, it, to man. end the episode. The two-week worth of intense discussion on the Trinity of God. And I really hope um, this kind of breaks it down and, and we have broke it down enough that it intrigues people to want to go study more. Yeah, and I don't really have any, many other final thoughts because it's been two long episodes of us giving our thoughts. Yeah, it's been thoughts all along. So I guess, uh, Mark, uh, let's give a qu- quick recap. Okay. A quick recap uh, of what what the, the Trinity is. If you give me, a, I want you as the person who didn't put these notes together uh, to make sure that I that you understood what I was trying. I mean, to, so it's what, hard for me the, to base it off of just this because what we no, talked but, about. But, but what what what's your What's your take on the so Trinity? So my understanding here? is what, the fact that the, A, the Trinity matters. Yep. Like, it actually does matter. It actually separates the God of the Bible, Yahweh, from all other gods or God, you know, based sure. on just your, yep. your religious preference. Yep. Uh, preference based on your re- religious backing, I guess, is a better way to do it. So the, the Trinity matters. The Bible actually both um, illuminates and defends and distinguishes the different persons of the, the, the Trinity. So there, yep. there is one God and there are three separate distinct persons is what we've, we've come to right. determine that that also is our own verbiage that we've created three, dis, right. three persons, one, three persons, one essence. One essence. Yep. And the fact is a, a, it matters B the Bible talks about it, defends it. The church fathers it, defended it. Right. And so the fact that the Trinity has always been a part of the Christian faith and we see the culmination and the fruition of that in the New Testament. Right. But it honestly does matter because it's still through the power of the Trinity by which we still go forward and do it. So as Christians, we can have assurance in the fact of, you know, the Holy Spirit is still active and working just as he always always has. It wasn't just right. the it wasn't just the church age that he worked. The Holy Spirit has been working ever since the very beginning. Yep. God the Son has always been there pointing people to God the Father since the very beginning. And we see God the Father always there from the beginning. Right. And so is there really like, does it change my life? Does it change my thought process? Well, I mean, for me personally, no, because I've always believed this. I've always right, thought sure. it. But I think it gives us a little credence in the fact of it separates us to have those conversations of not all roads lead to heaven. So what does that mean for us now and right. having those conversations? Right. And I, th- I hope it, uh, this these past two weeks have given you guys a little bit more confidence in and when, confidence, but also humility, too, because it gives the confidence well, of knowing this, but the humility of the fact of we don't fully know everything. Yeah, too. but confidence of like, okay, I understand it a little bit better. Yeah. Right? Because I didn't understand it before, or I'm not myself a Trinitarian, um, and I didn't understand where you guys were coming from, but maybe at least I know now and can continue the research. And and, and, and and we're we're called to give an answer for the hope that we have. Right. And and part of the hope that we have is the fact of that God is the, the, the Trinity is real. Yeah. The Trinity matters. And, and I mean, there's so much more to study on this. Mm-hmm. And, and I would encourage, again, I would encourage you, I would hope this invigorates people to want to dive more into the study and the doctrine of the Trinity. Time for Fun Facts with February. <laughs> All right, bro. So you warned us that you have another Egyptian one this I, week. I Last do. week you said you got an Egyptian one. I do. I accidentally just saw what it was. I was trying really hard Dang not to look. It. So I don't I don't see why. I just saw the headline. So okay. what's the fun fact? This nasty, weird Egyptian fun facts you got, bro. We need well, a whole Egyptian series so, of fun facts. So today's fun fact is onions were found in the eyes of e- of an Egyptian mummy. I want to know why. Pharaoh Ramsey the Fourth of ancient Egypt had his eyes replaced with small onions. When oh, he wait, was wait, wait, mummified. wait, 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 wait. Back up. Like as in they ripped his eyes out and put onions in instead? Yeah. So Pharaoh Ramsey uh, Pharaoh Ramses the Fourth of ancient, ancient Egypt had his eyes replaced with small onions when he was mummified. The rings and layers of onions were worshipped because people th- <laughs> people thought they represented eternal life. This aligns with the reason for mummification, to allow the Pharaoh to live forever. So we believe in the Trinity. They believe in onions. You know, uh, <laughs> ogres are like onions. Oh, they got less? <laughs> oh, the stank? <laughs> uh, make, make you cry? <laughs> yeah. No. But yeah, that is so weird tough. stuff. Yeah, so, so. so I think it's interesting. Look at all the other cultures are trying to figure out eternity and figure yeah. out eternity and eternal life and all these different it's things. It's been one of those long 
uh, debated questions of what what what's the purpose. And at the end of the day, the Egyptians were freaking weird. Well, Let's yeah, put it that way. They, they were. They thought weird. they was normal, but we think that they're weird. They were. But you know what else is there. weird, my guy? Us. The fact that. Don't be messing up my flow. The <laughs> fact that people have been listening to this show for many, many, many episodes and have not left us a review on Apple Podcasts, not left us a rating on Spotify, what? or not joined the Facebook group to continue the conversations. That's what's weird. That's crazy. You know, I've been working real hard at these transitions out, yeah, of, out of our fun facts. You must stand in front of the mirror and do this. <laughs> I practice. I go, I, and I even do my uh, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do to warm up for each episode. Wow, and then that crack. That's that's, <laughs> that's a joke, but it is a joke if you're not in the Facebook group. So it, go over to Facebook and join the Facebook group now to continue the conversations. And if you haven't already, go ahead and head on over to YouTube, type in Real Talk Christian Podcast, and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification Ding! so that you are aware when we are on. Just and like Noah. Just like Noah who, just, who watches on YouTube. Just like Noah. And if you haven't uh, checked out our other episodes, you can find everything that you need to know everything. at Real Talk Christian Podcast. Dot com. Did you know that there's some people that, I mean, and again, I'm glad they're asking the questions. They say, hey, have you guys covered an episode on this? And we're like, yes, I love we it. have. I love and it. And we just like, dropped the beep, answer. Beep. So if you're ever curious about if we've ever covered a topic, go to the website, hit that little search icon and search in the episodes because by this point, we're what, 100, or almost what, 179, 179 episodes, I think it says episode. not including bonus episodes. There, right. There's a crap load of RTC content yep. and there's going to be a lot more to come. Yep. I love it, guys. Well, hey, come back next week. We're going to continue in this theme of the Trinity. Not really. just kind of happened that way. We didn't plan it. Talking about Jesus' baptism and why on earth was Jesus baptized. Yep. So we love you guys. And until next time, take it easy.